Hello everyone, welcome back. We are doing a reaction video today. We are looking at some things that you have tagged me in online, on socials. I feel so old when I say online. You can tag me or send me anything that you find on Instagram, TikTok using these social things. Anything you think is a little bit weird, a little bit suspicious, let me know. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And let's see what we have today, okay. Okay, package thrown horribly at a door. Get a refund if this happens to you. Okay, so we have a broken okay. I think they're gonna try and fix this. Let me just say something though, straight up. If you receive a broken eyeshadow palette and the mirror has broken itself into the actual eyeshadows, not this intense, because they've obviously cracked them up. This is five minute crafts, so they're the worst, right? Please don't use it on your eyes. The shards of glass don't belong in your eye or fake glass, whatever it is. Even a shard of plastic could be terrible. Get yourself a refund. Okay, let's see how they fix it. Yeah, get rid of the main thing here. What are they doing? They're gonna... This is a bit extra. So they've cooked the product, the product, the white now looks darker than it was before. So now it's a cream, it's a beige. Um, this is all very unnecessary, taking out all the individual pans, which is something people do to put into their kit or something like that. Here's the deal though, right? If you are going to, if you get an eyeshadow palette that's broken, there are products out there that will, I'm so confused what's going on. There's products out there that will, wait, okay, wait, no, okay, sorry, one second. There's products out there that will allow you to repress it. Like, I mean, if this is a good option, why not just do that in the first place instead of baking it? I know it's gonna change the texture, but powders you can press just back together. I've done it before myself. Could have saved yourself a lot of time. Where'd you get that mirror from? That's obviously it before it was smashed because we've seen it. That's not it. That's not it. Liars, fucking liars. Oh, broken lipstick now. Okay, fine. That's, that's disgusting, but that's also, that's just ruined. <laughs> it's just ruined. At this point, you might as well melt it um, down into like a tub and use it from the tub as well. But also, no, get all the stuff from in there. There's way more lipstick now. That's not lipstick. That's wax. That wasn't lipstick. Sorry, one second, one second. That's not lipstick. That's wax, and they're melting wax. And now we're making their own mold of their own finger for the lipstick. Just, just put it in a little tub, melt it down in a little tub. Nah, sorry. Look, that's, that's not, no. <laughs> oh, I hate them so much. Okay, I got tagged in this one a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, TikTok, I need your help. Any suggestions are great, please. I am 35 and my face is changing and I need some products that are actually going to work for my skin now. This was taken at 7.30 this morning. Um, I just put my makeup on. These are the products that I used. I only used the Pond's uh, face lotion last night and this morning, um, but the other stuff I did use today. This is at 1 o'clock when I was on my lunch break. Now, I work in an office setting, so I'm in an air-conditioned room. There's no reason for my face to look like this. This is at 541 when I got home today. You can see how greasy around my nose. The makeup is off my nose. I just need some help and suggestions, please. I found this really interesting because I did take a look at her profile, and she has really great skin. And I feel like the makeup is covering it up. Not in a way like, don't wear makeup because we love makeup, right? My suggestion is here that a lot of product is being used unnecessarily. You can see the makeup, even as it's just done, isn't gripping to the skin properly. It's, it hasn't had the chance to be able to grip. A lot of powder products are being used as well. A lot of this texture is powder. Also, the, the tone is incorrect, but we can, that's, that's something to fix later. So there are a lot of products here that are, accentuate, that are accentuating texture on the skin, um, which everybody has, and she has great skin. Now, I think there's powder here, there's powder here, there's powder here. You can see that it's already coming away from the skin here. If we powder on top of fluid, that perhaps isn't right for our skin or our skincare hasn't quite settled in properly, if we powder on top of that, the powder is gonna lift the creamy products or the fluid products away from the face, right? There's a lot of, okay, so we have, this e.l.f. face cream is beautiful because it's not too heavy. 
These two don't be need to be used together. This Maybelline Fit Me one can be used by itself, and then a translucent powder would be better. The Maybelline Fit Me isn't a powder foundation, but it does have coverage. And here's the thing, our powders, if we have a foundation like the, the Maybelline Fit Me foundation, the fluid, which has enough coverage already, you can build it up, you then don't need to go in with a powder with coverage. Now, it's not a powder foundation, so it isn't that kind of coverage, but they do have shades, so they do offer more coverage. There is a translucent one, but I would not I would recommend going for something completely different and go for a really soft, loose powder if you need to use powder all over the face. Because when we go later on to here, now I know this is greasy and I know it's oily. My skin gets like this too, but the shine in some areas does look nicer than completely matte, right? My my thing here is with this individual, look, I, let's come back to this area where we saw the makeup lifting already. It's, it's further lifted here. And you can see these are oily parts of our face. You can even see on me, it's starting to get shiny already on me. This is an oil problem. If we have too much coverage on top of oily areas, it just melts away. Oil breaks down makeup, it breaks down even the most toughest makeup, waterproof makeup. So if we're putting too much product on, it's gonna look super, super obvious. These, I don't believe these products are good for her skin. Separation, separation. So what I would suggest is lose the, lose the sponge. We're not getting it into the skin enough. Go for a, a denser, harder, powder brush. And I wanted to, I wanted to, she shared this one herself in her socials and I was tagging it so many times, but I know this is a common problem for a lot of people. Small dense powder brushes like this, this is just a face brush, complexion brush, so much better for your foundation. The issue here is, I know we don't want makeup to be in, in our pores, but as long as you're double cleansing later, you're fine. The makeup hasn't become part of the skin, it is just sitting on top. And we really want our products to become part of the skin, melt into our skin, into our skincare, into our primer. And that's, that's the problem we're having here. When I tell people my secret to long lasting eyeliner is a ballpoint pen. Listen. Like a lot of products that aren't beauty products, just because they say they're non-toxic doesn't mean they should enter or be near your eyes or your mouth, right? Terrible. Terrible. Please do not do that. Please don't use a pen on your face, in your eyes, around your mouth. That's not made to be for your face. If you're having trouble with even waterproof liner lasting, you need an eyeshadow primer, a waxy eyeshadow shadow primer, not those silky smooth ones. Sigma. Sigma is my favorite because it's kind of drier on the lid. You need to stop the eyelids coming, you need to stop your eyelids coming through, you need to stop the oil coming through your eyelids. It's barrier. You need to stop it because it melts makeup. Oil. Eyelids are oily, and as I just mentioned, oil breaks down makeup, and it's gonna break down all your makeup. My wings are uneven, I just realized. It's fine. <laughs> Can someone please explain how to fix this? And we have that teared up area. Ouchies. That, that's painful sometimes. Here's the deal, you can get areas like this, when a product is too hydrating for your eyelids, it could be maybe you use a concealer as a base instead of an eye primer because they tend to have concealers, foundations, complexion products have hydrating ingredients in them. And sometimes they can make our eyes really sensitive and we get that stinging on the inside corner, the outside corner, and then we start to tear up, right? If we're going to fix this in a makeup way, if, I, if someone came to me with that and I was like, this is completely teared up, I'll be like, well, this is going to be quite difficult, but we, we can do it. Eyeshadow primer. <laughs> you get a, a, a dry eyeshadow primer, not concealer. Do a little bit on the back of your hand and, and just let it set. Let it set for a few minutes. Take your finger or a brush and then we're going to tap that eyeshadow primer onto the dry area off the lid. Put down some powder and it, it might be patchy at this point. Put down some powder and go in with another layer or a flesh color eye pencil a gel, a gel one, one of these wind up ones, but are a bit smoother because these tend to be waterproof, water resistant, and you can draw over that area that's now a bit more sensitive and isn't taking product as well. You need to put something down like this. You see it's waxy. That's gonna hold on to eyeshadow product after that. Uh, so a flesh color eye pencil. I love the ones from ColourPop, the gel liners. I have my tub of them here and you can see they come in so many different colors. So you can just choose a deeper shade if you have a deeper skin tone, a lighter shade if you have a lighter skin tone, white if if you want to, if you're wearing black eyeshadow, use a black pencil. What that waxy texture, lay it down, you'll be good. Oh no, here we go. If you wear makeup, you know it can wreak havoc on your skin. It can build up and clog your pores, predisposing you to acne bumps. Some formulas can even irritate rosacea prone sensitive skin. True. With the Clinique Acne Solutions formulation in over 20 shades with salicylic acid, 
you get visibly fewer clogged pores and a mattifying effect. This is makeup infused with skincare that actually makes your skin look better as you use it. I'm obsessed. Let's go through this bit by bit, right? Oh, and I just want to say this is an ad. It is not disclosed correctly with a partner after the press more bit, but it is an ad. Can it clog your pores? And I'm surprised a dermatologist is saying this. Not him, because he just talks crap all the time. Makeup can clog your pores, yes. You can get non-comedogenic products, which, 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 you know, have a claim that they don't clog your pores. There's no need to worry about it, though. If you are double cleansing your skin and removing your makeup correctly, you have no worries about makeup. I wear makeup so much, so much, it, it being my job, right? Are my, are my pores clogged? Am I getting bumps and spots and all this stuff? No, because I cleanse my face. I double cleanse. I use a cleansing balm or an oil, depending what I have open at the time, rinse it off, and maybe I'll do go in again and, and cl cleanse with a balm or oil. No wipes, keep wipes away from your face. And then I wash my face with a cleanser. Formulas can even irritate rosacea prone sensitive skin. True. But also, that tends to be when they have like active ingredients in them, right? Like skincare products. If you have rosacea or skin that is quite um, sensitive, from my experience as a makeup artist with people who have issues or sensitive skins, rosaceas, rosacea, rosacea, um, eczema, you shouldn't be wearing makeup with your eczema, but I know people want to. Um, stay away from products with active ingredients or skincare ingredients in them, because they tend to, you know, want to work with a skin, and at that point, you don't want it, you just want it to sit on your skin. Okay, so this says, before powder. Okay, that's before powder? Okay. Right, okay, okay. After powder. You shouldn't be relying on powder to smooth out your skin. I, I'm so sick of seeing this. We doing like, you know, concealer and all this kind of stuff. It's like, oh, my skin's not smooth enough. Let me do loads of powder. No matter what your skin looks like in terms of texture. And again, I'm telling you this from working on thousands of people throughout my career. No matter what your skin looks like, the texture, you, your skin can look smooth if you are using the correct products. We live in this society. <laughs> where we just want to try everything and we don't take in what foundation is made for our skin type, tone, and texture. We just put anything on because it's going viral because we want to try it, which is fine if you have the money to waste, good for you. But if it's not working for your skin, don't use it. Find something that works for you. Your skincare perhaps isn't working. Maybe you haven't exfoliated enough. Find the root of a problem rather than trying to fix it with a powder or trying to fix it with makeup. Makeup's amazing and it helps us through tough times when perhaps we do need a bit more coverage or we do need to cover that blemish. But if your skin looks like this, no offense to this person, before powder, then you're doing something wrong. Your eyes, yes, eyes crease, it's natural, but you can stop this kind of texture and this kind of creasing and this here too. And on the nose, skin is skin is textured. My skin looks like this. My skin looks like this, but because I use the correct products for my skin, it doesn't look like that with makeup on. Makeup can accentuate texture, absolutely. But again, let's look after our skin so it looks great under makeup. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm getting back to my days of, of going crazy. Okay, I see why you're not supposed to curl your lashes after mascara now. No. No. You, okay. You can curl your lashes after mascara. You should be careful. You can do. Perhaps don't, but you can do. This, what in the sh living shit is going on there? What the hell is going on there? What's this? Is this the pad of the, the the curler broken and coming out? Your 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 wand. No, what am I saying? Your lash curler, right? Let me focus. Not on me, on the curler. Don't focus on me. Okay, I'll do it on I'll do it on this camera as a side camera. Okay. So I'm having to do it here because my other camera isn't focusing on me. Your lash curler, when you push it down, you should still be able to see the sorry this is dirty, I've just used it. This spun the what's this called? The plasticky bit. You should still be able to see it when you're pushing it down. Where's it gone? Where's it gone here? If you are not using this, I'm gonna have to put this back straight in after. If you're not using this, or this is damaged, you're cutting, you're cutting your lashes. You're gonna, like, even that kind of hurts. You're gonna, you're, you're literally, sounds like scissors, right? This, here, where's it gone? Where is your protective pad gone? It is disappeared. It's non-existent. No wonder your lashes came off. I'm sorry for you, but no wonder your lashes came off. So yes, you can you can curl your lashes after mascara. 
with warning, heed of a warning. People are going to say like, put powder on it. You don't even need to do that. You, people make things so complicated. Just, just be very careful and slowly open. These don't have the power to cut your lashes unless this is old. And that's why they always come with replacements. Okay, but this is actually kind of insane. This is the bottle of this face primer. It's by e.l.f. Obviously, you can see it. It's empty, so I was like, oh, let me take off the lid and get the remaining product out of there. Okay, this is how long this is. This is how long the bottle looks. Bruh. Like... I don't know if you can see in there, but it literally goes to, like, right here. Now, I'm not a scientist or anything, but what the fuck is that? Why is there nothing in there? They are ripping us off because this doesn't go up or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. It's literally... That right there holds the tiny amount of product. That is crazy. Now, this isn't the most expensive product, but no, actually. I feel like that is nuts for it to be that tiny amount in there. And you think that you're buying this whole container because it's you the are. same color. What the fuck, Elf? I can't tell if this is satire or not. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna approach this from the fact that she believes what she's saying, because I can't, I can't tell. Now listen, no sh question is a stupid question. Obviously it does go up. You know like the old pumpy toothpaste? Do they still make those? And how it pushes itself up as, as it empties? That's what this product does. So it, it does push itself up, it does move. And it's actually a good thing because it's making sure that it's squeezing and pushing up all the product. If that was just a long tube in a tub, sometimes you you miss out on some product right at the bottom or um you have to open it up and try and scoop it out. I feel kind of bad for her. It does pump up, it, it does go up. You would have had to use that whole product though. So surely you can't believe it was that much when you've been using it for, I guess, months, right? <laughs> I, don't know what to, I don't know what to say. It does, it absolutely does go up. It travels up as you pump. It squeezes all the product out right to the end so you get every single last piece. And she's right in saying, you know, it's not an expensive product. So perhaps it's not surprising that you don't get a full thing of, of that, but you, you in fact do. Okay, let's look at our final hack for today. Where did you get your lips done? Me. <laughs> Okay. I see. Okay. So that looks kind of wild, right? But actually, it, it kind of makes sense. When you see somebody who has their lips done, probably not at the best place, <laughs> they do have these kind of like lumpier bits here, right? So in order to make those bits look lumpy, yes, we would, you have to have a contrast to make something look bigger, a contrast to make something look darker. So yeah, we could absolutely deepen these areas, therefore making these two areas look brighter and, and forward, right? So it is going to give you more of a highlight. Same with shading under the lip, it's going to give it an appearance of being bigger. She's then making the bits stronger. So again, contrast to make it stand out. I don't think those bits around here are necessary to be honest with you. The, okay, so you can see that already. This overlining might be a bit much. Do bear in mind when you're lining your lips, you do have to face this way at some point. And if people can see your lip actually stops and then there's the top of your lip, it kind of looks stupid. It's not that crazy. If you were to be doing like a character makeup where somebody did have full lips, full lips with filler, but perhaps you didn't have any prosthetics, that is probably something you you could consider doing and getting getting the good result for it. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. As always, tag me in anything you see online. Send it to me in my inbox on any social media platforms. Thank you so much for joining me. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.